Hi there YouTubers and 3D Studio Max lovers! In today's episode we're going to talk about how to render your product in 3D Studio Max and Corona Render. But lately, if you checked all the websites like ASOS and some other websites like Zalando, they are all showing their products in there. It could be clothing, it could be shoes, it could be anything even uh, a bottle of, uh, of perfume or watches and so on. So uh, many companies realize that it's quite hard to take all the products and to uh, take photos of them, create a studio for all of that and then do the post production and so on. So this is quite expensive, the whole this process and you need to do it each time when you have a new product. So many companies out there, they are just uh, creating a 3D model of that product and they are just rendering that product in 3D Studio Max in this case with Corona Render or can be any other uh, 3D software. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to create these kind of renders, how to do the tone mapping for these kind of renders and how to make them look good in this kind of environment. So if you guys are ready, let's jump in. So as you can see here, I have a new empty space. I'm going to copy, drag in here my uh, bottle of, from Gizu. You can find the link in the description. They can download this from uh, my Patreon account. For the other ones, uh, yeah, you can use any other product uh, that you can find on the internet. And uh, yeah, let's jump into this. Okay, I have my product in here, as you can see. Yeah, this is just a 3D model that I made some uh, time ago uh, for this company, for Gizu. So as you can see, it's just a high poly 3D model. It has uh, all the necessary details in here to, yeah, to make it look good. But anyway, yeah, for the purpose of this video is more than enough. So the first thing that uh, we need to do is to create the background to create the studio, actually. So to do that, we're just just gonna use a simple plane like this and to this plane I'm gonna just delete all the unnecessary edges that are in here you can use real world map size or not that depends on you and then uh, what's imp the most important thing is to just to have it bigger than the object so I will just make it a little bit larger than this just to be sure that in the moment that I'm gonna add the lights everything is gonna be okay so then I'm going to apply an editable poly to all of this. I'm going to select this edge from behind and I'm just going to extrude this with the shift as you can see. And after that, I will just uh, use a um, poly select and here I will check the edge. I will select it and I will apply a chamfer to this. And this chamfer is going to be quite big, maybe like this. I'm just going to select this and with perspective, I will just go and see how it's actually looking. Okay is okay for now i'll just make a little bit of not straight angle just to have a little bit of an angle to in here and now i'll select again my object that is behind and try to add more segments in here in this way i'm gonna get here a nice uh, gradient okay this should be enough for now as you can see you can see the object and you can see the gradient also and now what we need to do to be sure that we are keeping everything uh, still i will use shift f just to see my my object and then i will uh, create here a uh, custom and use the image aspect ratio one this means that i'm gonna get a square image i'm gonna lock this and now i will just use uh, 2000 just to have and now i will just go closer to my object and i will apply a camera to be sure that i'm going to have this uh, view till the end make a little bit more of an angle if i want to and i will create a corona camera from the view okay now i will just go to my camera and i will make a couple of small adjustments uh, i just need the automatically vertical tilt because i want to just be sure that my object uh, straight the verticals are straight and then i will uh, yeah adjust my camera more but right now because i already have a camera in here i just want to change the focal length so i will add a little bit more most of the time for the focal length is good to have a bigger focal length like 80 millimeters or at least 50 this is a good focal length for portraits and uh, yeah you should start from here don't go with the focal length less than that because if you go with 20 for example and then i zoom in the my object is gonna have a lot of deformation as you can see here so if i go with 80 for example now it's more or less 
less of deformation in my object. Okay, I think this uh, could work. It's looking very nice. I will just leave it as it is. I will just save this file for now. Okay, and now uh, let's uh, create a material for this uh, surface, for the background, I mean. And to do that, I'm just gonna go to my slate material Need to load my Corona render first. Just save this as default. Yeah, and I will just close this for now. So let's create here a Corona physical material. This just needs to be a simple uh, material, as you can see here. And to this material, I will just uh, try to make it as white as possible. Uh, not fully white. I will explain you why. It needs to be just almost there, a little bit of gray. The roughness can go to 0.1. Point two, if you want to have some reflection in the surface or it can be even one so one is no no reflective and zero is fully reflective this is how the roughness works if you don't want to work with roughness uh, you can just go here to advanced option and change the roughness mode to glossiness and now it's gonna work exactly the opposite so the glossiness you can see here some reflection and if I make this zero is gonna be uh, like this. Of course, you can use this technique in any other program and any other uh, rendering software, in case I forgot to say that. So for right right now, I will just leave it as it is, uh, simple white, and I will just apply this to my surface, okay? And it should be fine for now. Now let's start our render and let's see what's happening in here. And in the moment that I'm doing that, as you can see, you don't see much, but yeah, this is everything that you can see. If I go to 8 in here and I add a white color in here, I should already start to see something, which is this. So yeah, as you can see, we have some shadows in here. They are all coming from this uh, diffused light from the white that we applied in here. But to, to actually have some lights in here, we need to apply an HDRI. And for this HDRI, I'm going to use one from 3D Collective. If you don't know Adam Martin, I mean, for sure you know Adam Martin if you are Spanish, but in case you don't know Adam Martin, uh, yeah, it's a very good, uh, very good 3D Studio Mac V-Ray and Corona Render uh, teacher, and he's also selling some uh, stuff on his website, uh, and uh, yeah, he has all kind of stuff. They are quite, some of them are quite expensive, some other they are uh, okay as a price. For what you get so yeah we're, what we're going to use today is are this uh, real light studio hdri pack uh, it's only 25 euros there are a uh, lots of hdris in here so yeah if you can see in his uh, website what they are doing this uh, hdris they are quite nice and uh, this is how I, they are actually looking so yeah i think they are very very useful so okay let me load our HDRI in here in the environment map. I will just click the environment, Corona bitmap, and now my, I will open my slate material. And in here, I'm just gonna create an environment, and I will just drag my Corona bitmap in here as an instance. And now I will just go to my textures, HDRI, and what I'm going to use is the Real Light Studio, the softbox. And in here, I'm going to use this one. Uh, you can use any other uh, softbox from here. So this is my softbox in 4K. I will just load this. I will just leave everything as it is and hit OK. And now I have my HDRI in here. And in the moment that I'm starting the render, as you can see, I have this. This part here is a metal. So as you can see behind is reflecting this uh, plane that we made in here. And in the front is uh, reflecting a black color. Uh, this is happening because we'll just take the metal in here is because on the reflection environment I added a dark color this gray because otherwise if I delete this and I start my render again it's going to reflect the HDRI but I don't want that because uh, most of the time in this kind of renders you have the metal it looks more or less black and you see some lights on it so in the glass, I don't mind to have these reflections here, which are making everything look more realistic. But in this part here, I would like to have my environment black because in the moment that I'm going to add the lights in this scene, I would like to, to see those lines, those lights as lines in here. So to show you that, 
to show you what I'm talking about is this. As you can see here, I see these lines and everything looks black, more or less, other than the background where it, which is reflecting here on the side, but I can't do mesh to fix that. So I would like to have this kind of effect in here. So to do that, I just need to create my material for this metal part, black, and to tell him that I want my reflection environment to have it black. In this case, gray, I can change the color in here and I can just make it black, as you can see, or more or less black. Now I'll hit okay. And now what I'm going to do next is to add some lights in here. So to do that, we need to add some lights to have the look of this view. So we will start with that. So I will just go to lights, uh, corona, corona light, and here I'm going to use a uh, rectangle. 10 by 10 right now and uh, I'll just go to my top view as you can see with the corona light and I'll just create a light in here I will just make this light uh, because I'm in this file where the unit setup are in centimeter ah, I will just use metric system unit in centimeter and this can go also in centimeters I'll hit ok and I'll make this so uh, 100 which is 1 meter by 2 meters so 200 and I just created a light in here and now I will just rotate this light like this and I will use a target for this light and I will move this target on top of my object. Actually it should be on the object like this. And now I can just move my light in here more or less like this and I will just make it in this direction and I would like not to see this light directly on my object in the moment that I'm rendered because I would like to keep the HDRI look as the view on my glass so I will take it out from here but I will leave the visible uh, reflections and the refractions and uh, you can leave the generate to generate caustics or not that depends on you but in the moment that you have glass uh, yeah, this could work uh, and it can look very, very nice. And I will just leave it as it is. For now, uh, maybe I will just put a little bit less of intensity and let's have a look how it's everything actually starting to look. And in the moment that I did that, you can see that it's already looking better. And here I can see the first line of my uh, light which is looking nice. Of course, this is looking quite dark. Uh, I can change the color of that very easy by just changing the color of this solid color. So, so if this looks very dark for you, you can just change it because as you can see, the color of this is a brass. So the brass is not going to be very, very dark, even though if the background is very dark. So I would like to keep the color so I can play here with the gray in such a way that it still looks a little bit like brass, but it's a dark brass and I can also see my uh, object and the light. And I will just hit OK for now. This should be fine. To make things easier, I will just go here with all of my viewports and I'm gonna lock this viewport in here, view to render, and I will just lock it. So in the moment that I'm going to start rendering from the viewport, the camera is always going to render this object. So what I can do right now, I can go here on the top and I can just move the light in such a way that my light is gonna look better. See, I can move it more to the left, more to the right, and I can see the changes directly here. Also, if the line, the light here is too wide, I can just go back to, to my options and I can change the width, I can get less. Okay. This is uh, already looking good. Uh, what I'm going to do now is to create another light from a different direction, which is here. You can even make this wider. So you have different types of lights in here, as you can see. You can even have less intensity. So you have different intensity, uh, different light intensity in here. And then I will make another one more in the middle as a copy. I can make this wider if I want to, as you can see. You can even though you can even make these lights smaller in size and you can add more of them and then in the back I will make another one because I would like to have a light also here on the side. And I will just make this a little bit smaller. Also in size. You can have a different power to it. I will make another one on the other side. 
as you can see because this is quite high my light is ending here so it's not going on the full surface of the object uh, I can just change that by going down like this and also on the other one if I want to it's good to have different intensities for the lights or oh, in this way it's gonna look more realistic as you can see right now so as you can see it's already looking quite good the only thing that I don't really like is the fact that the background is getting this gradient here from the middle ending there so to fix that I will just uh, take one of these lights and move it here in the back as a copy and I will just try to illuminate only my background like this I can add more power to it as you can see if I'm getting a very powerful shadow in here I can select this plane put the name in here background and to this light I can uh, tell the program by selecting this excluded object and I will say include and I want to include only my background and I will hit ok and now it's going to, it's going to illuminate only my background not also the the bottle so to all these lights you can exclude them from the background if you want or you can include only the bottle and so on so i will just take out the visibility in reflection refraction and everything else so now i'm having illuminated only the background as you can see it's this one that i need to do okay uh, so now we have quite a good uh, illumination in here I would say and uh, let's move to the next phase well that is actually the the tone mapping for now I'll just stop this and go back to my original render and open my corona frame buffer and now uh, let's start playing a little bit with the frame buffer so the first thing that I'm going to do I'm gonna take the aces out uh, transform out we're not going to use this this is gone the saturation is also out we don't need it the green and the magenta tint also out we don't need it and this is our render right now I'll just leave everything as it is and what I'm going to add in here which is very important the first thing that we need, you need to add is the curves the moment that I open the curves I can see you can see my render so to fix this render right away you just need to go with the blacks in here but we're not gonna do that yet we're just gonna leave it here to see our diaphragm so in this way uh, we know what to do to make it better so the first thing that we're going to do is to give it less exposure how do you know when to stop well you should stop in the moment that you see all of this in here starting from left to right so i need to go till here maybe yeah we need to go till here and this can go here in the moment that i did that it's already looking a little bit better but I will just leave it as it is as you can see here you can see the different colors of my lights I could make this a little bit maybe one of them should be brighter this one for example should be brighter but I will do that in a second with the light mix All right now let's leave everything as it is as you can see in here because we use the 6500 lights it's looking a little bit too warm so I will just make the white balance a little bit less so I'll go 6200 maybe 4800 uh, 500 5800 yeah this uh, could be fine I will just uh, leave it as it is it's looking good and now I'll just go here and add a filmic mapping this filmic mapping needs to go above the curves in this way I can in the moment that I'm changing the filmic mapping is gonna change also the curves so I can see all the time that my diaphragm is between these two points so I'll just stop the render for now, go back to my original render and start here the setup light mix, instance, generate and now in the moment that I'm gonna start my render I can also have a light mix in here and I can play a little bit with the lights. So first thing is the environment, I can make the environment more powerful. These are all of my lights. This one for example I can give it a little bit more power. Okay. this one being in front I can also give it a little bit more this can also have a little bit more getting here a nice uh, reflection as you can see this one can also have a little bit more 
and the last one is the background here i can also have a little bit more the environment can also go a little bit higher because this is going to illuminate also my object but also the background now i will just leave everything as it is and go to my post and in here i'm gonna try to create a curve in here like an s curve which is more or less starting from here and it's ending here i can also check if my curve is fine so i don't have any other stuff in the my uh, diagram in here so this point from here it should end here so i will just go and do that and now i know that my light is correct in this project okay now we're gonna go to the highlights compression and i'm gonna compress my highlights i'll bring my shadow make them more rich then i will add also the advanced filmic in here and i will move this under i will just open it let's see how it's looking and this is gonna go 0.3 around here 0.2 should be fine uh the two length can stay 0.5 as you can see this is what the two length is actually doing shoulder length i'll just uh, leave it less and the shoulder angle i'll just leave it more or less like this so as you can see in the moment that i apply the advanced filmic everything went a little bit more to the left if i move my object here but i will just keep my s curve like this and if i want to move this more to the right i can just go more like this so if i want to bring more light inside the room inside the, my object inside my scene you can just change it from here and of course you can always play again with the light mix in case you want more light in the background to make everything more even and the light that it's illuminating my background which is this one i can just go higher with it with that this is the light that it's in front of me if i want to see more of my object i can just play with this and make it brighter but remember in the moment that you played with all these lights you need to go to your post and again play with your uh, exposure and the curves and also in the end you can add a little bit more of contrast if you want to see better your object so three is kind of the maximum that you can use even two is more than enough and uh, if you want more lights you can just move them around as i showed you in here if you don't like the arrangement or you can just add more power to them from the light mix as you can see in the moment that i'm doing that my object is getting more illuminated and uh, if you want more also from the environment so depending on the look that you just want to have you can just play with all these lights and see exactly uh, where do you want to go how much uh, light do you want to have in this uh, object because uh, yeah depending on that and on these lights this is it's going to affect your background so this was my final render uh, after I rendered that scene as you can see here I added a little bit more power to the lights on the left side to get the light from that direction and to have this nice shadow in here and uh, yeah this looks everything looking much better I have some reflection here that you can see from the from the lights but also from the HDRI and uh, yeah this is a render that it took approximately uh, one hour to make this uh, material to make this uh, material look very well because in the other one that I just where we worked uh, that was uh, just a preview of the final render so yeah this was the lesson for today in case you liked it please don't forget to subscribe I'm going to create more videos in the future about all kind of things uh, regarding 3d rendering uh, making portfolios Photoshop all kind of programs in case you liked it please don't forget to subscribe i'm going to create more videos in the future about all kind of things uh, regarding 3d rendering uh, making portfolios photoshop all kind of programs all kind of render engines thumbs up if you find it useful share it with your friends and see you in the next one bye